from the heart of the Midwest in St. Louis, Missouri. We are live at Ameristar Casino for Shamrock Fighting Championships, where tonight it may be cold and snowy outside, but it's hot in here for Shamrock FC 314. Good evening, I am Jeremy Johnson, and tonight, joining me in the broadcast booth, I have the great pleasure to introduce Olympian and world champion wrestler Sammy Henson. Sammy, thank you for joining us tonight. Glad to be here back in my hometown of St. Charles, Missouri and representing the Shamrock FC 2019. Now it's a big one. Let me bring in Shamrock FC president Jesse Finney. Jesse, we have a crazy night of fights to kick off 2019. We are here, Jeremy. Like you said, it is freezing cold outside, snowy, but it's going to be hot in here. It's our main event this evening, which will feature Kevin, the hitman angle. He will be taking on Shaw Zofalakari. Yeah, Shaw is coming out. He's looking to make his debut here and take out the Kevin Angle. Now, Kevin the Hitman Angle has fought all over the world with the World Combat League in kickboxing. Tonight, he's back here. They call him the Hitman for a reason. And I can tell you something, Kevin's got dynamite in the left, he's got dynamite in the right. And this is his old stomping grounds. He says, I am here tonight and I am gonna knock him out. And then in our co-main event this evening, it will feature the Taekwondo black belt, Corbin Howard. He will be taking on Nathan Lindsay. Yeah, Lindsay, he won by first uh, pro debut with a, a, a submission, and he'll look to take out Corbin Howard. Now, Corbin Howard, the Taekwondo black belt, very flashy, looking to follow in his brother Jordan's footsteps to Bellator. He's got big footsteps in Jordan, but I can tell you something, Corbin can do whatever he wants to do in this sport. He is a talented young man and has got the whole package. And he is flashy, flashy, and watch out, don't blink when he is in the cage. It's time, it's Shamrock FC 314. Let me send it up to the cage to Joe Parisi to kick us off. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a kickboxing bout scheduled for three rounds in the Shamrock Fighting Championships middleweight division. And this bout is for the vacant Shamrock FC middleweight title. Introducing first, fighting tonight out of the blue corner, an undefeated kickboxer who stands six feet, one inches tall. He weighed in officially 184.4 pounds. Fighting out of O'Fallon, Missouri, the outsider, Dan Harina. Standing across the cage, his opponent tonight fighting out of the red corner. This fighter stands five feet, 11 inches tall. He weighed in officially at 185 pounds. Fighting out of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, Keith the Sleeper Dawson. Referee Dwayne Bess has the call for this middleweight title bout. Keith Dawson in the red tape, Dan Harina in the blue. Quick touch of the gloves. Dan's gonna come forward. Dan is always very aggressive. Big oh. shot to the body. Little slip. Both of them have heavy, heavy hands. Very heavy hands. Karina looking for those leg kicks, each one of his own. Karina going upstairs. Nice straight left. Dawson kind of teeing up here. Yeah, he's trying to pick his, pick his shots, right? Yes, he's definitely trying to pick the shots here. Karina pushing for big hands, though. They're out of Dawson. Karina's just going to go, right? He's going to let his hands go. And he needs to start setting up those kicks, though, with some punches. Yeah. He needs to let the jab, let the hands go. Nice leg kick there out of Harina. A little slower start than we've seen in Harina in the past. Big shot to the body. Oh! oh! So heavy right hand. Oh, he's hurt. He's rocked him. He rocked him. Harina trying to swarm. He needs to keep that he pressure. Go he's got to move forward on him now. Again, Harina starting oh! to throw. That's right. That one was deemed a knockdown. For sure. It must have been right at the bell. 
Yeah, it had to be. Okay, so in this exchange there then, we saw Harina, one, he got rocked right. from that shot, but he also did some damage there against Dawson. Now, the knockdown, though, is definitely gonna play into the scoring of that fight. 100%. Because then it makes it a 10-8 round or a 9-9 round for whomever takes the win in that one. Yeah, I so think. So if, yeah. if Harina won that round, it becomes a 9-9 round. And I can see that, right? Yeah, on the 10-point must scoring system, Harina did a good job of moving forward. But it's a tough one to call, so we'll see how that one plays out. Tonight's fights are brought to you in part by our friends in the barbecue. He's got to set up his fight. He's got to set up his uh, his hands better. You know, use his jab a little bit more. Yeah, he's got to throw the jab out there. Keeps him honest. Keep, you know, it, he, it keeps Dawson honest. Great first round, though. Great first round. Here we go. Touch of the gloves, back into the action. Dan Harina in the blue tape. Dawson in the red. Harina's gotta watch bending down like that. He's gonna go upstairs right there. But the thing is, is you can kick Harina and he just kinda laps at you and keeps coming forward. Yeah, I feel like Dawson's kinda uh, finding his groove a little bit though. Big spinning back fist. Dance Harina dangerous. hates one Oh, there, nice though. body lock. Bad as kickboxing, huh? Yeah, nice inside leg kick. They're out of Dawson. Again, Dawson in the red, Harina in the black. Those are starting nice to really work kick. on the inside. Oh, big shot. shot. Harina has got to start to check those kicks. Where's his jab? There we go. Oh, he eats a big combination. Harina with a leg. That front leg kick has got to be hurting because he's starting to try to reach down to catch it. And he's got to watch it because as you do that, your opponent may then turn it, switch it up, and come up high and kick you in the face. Oh, right, the chin, though. There's his. There it is. And Harina just waves him off. Harina. Eats another big one. This is going. Swarming Dawson's trying to Dawson's finish. Going. He is a sleeper. End of the round again. Big Whoa. head kick there from Dawson. Land really. Harina just kind of laughed at him. Harina is the man. I, I I don't know how he stood up from there. Final round of this middleweight kickboxing title. Big round here. Who wants it more, ladies and gentlemen? 
Dan has to have some urgency here. Dan has got to stop going down like that. Yeah, he's, he's got to out. stop reaching. Put his head down there. Spinning back kick answered with a high kick. Eats a big right hand. Get some jabs. Dawson trying to pick his shots, doing more precision striking. He, that leg kick sat him down. They are gonna call that a knockdown because of the damage. Yeah, damage to the leg, knockdown. They said it before we started tonight. Yeah, in the rules meeting, they tell the fighters that even a leg kick is damaging. Again, big head kick there out of Dawson. But Harina is just as tough as they come. Harina feels, though, that he has got to start moving forward. He feels that he's behind now, especially with these two eight counts. He definitely has to go forward. He has to do something. He's got to finish this fight. Oh, that's... Again, that leg kick, he's going to get another one. Now, if I was Dawson, I'd do it right again. Ten seconds. Harina moves forward. Big middleweight title fight there. Great fight. Great fight. The leg kicks were the story of this fight. For sure. The leg kicks by Dawson, the pinpoint accuracy, and whenever he threw something and landed, and that was the difference in the fight. I mean, I mean Haran's lands were wild, but Dawson's lands were pinpoint, and he took advantage of it. And as we look here at our instant replay, again, Dawson just Pinpoint accuracy, inside leg kick to that thigh hurts so bad. Yeah, it hurt me over here. Oh, absolutely. And it is, it's incredibly painful in that area. I mean, <laughs> you know, whenever you get knee cut in wrestling, it's the same thing. When you get kicked there, it's just incredibly painful. It's not a good feeling. You don't need that. Not at <laughs> all. Let's send this one up to the cage to Joe Parisi to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. We have a unanimous decision. All three judges scored tonight's bout 30-25. Your winner and new champion out of the red corner, Keith the Sleeper Dawson. Well, they cannot call him the Sleeper anymore. What a win to take our middleweight kickboxing title. Very impressive. I mean, I'm a Dawson fan. I love Orlando. What he did, he fights with everything he has. Uh, just, uh, he got it, you know, he, he got he got beat by a better man today. A beautiful fight there. We still have more action to come. We are going to take a quick break, and we will be right back with the main card right here at Shamrock FC 314.
Ladies and gentlemen, this is a mixed martial arts bout scheduled for three rounds in the Shamrock Fighting Championships lightweight division. Introducing to you first, fighting tonight out of the blue corner. A mixed martial artist that stands five feet, 10 inches tall. He weighed in 155 pounds. Fighting out of Huntsville, Alabama, Chris Petty. His opponent standing across the cage, fighting tonight out of the red corner. This mixed martial artist stands five feet, 10 inches tall. He weighed in 155.4 pounds. Fighting out of Pocahontas, Illinois. Colin Clean Park! Referee Dwayne Bess has the call for this fight. This fight is three five minute rounds in the Shamrock FC lightweight division. Colin Parr in the red tape, Chris Petty in the blue. Chris Petty coming all the way from Huntsville, Alabama. Petty also has fought a lot of his fights at 170, now making the move down to 155. Which hopefully he did weight right, right? To help his conditioning. Petty does not want to go to the ground here. Parr swinging for that leg lock here. Petty does not want to be here. Big takedown, they're out of par. Parr trying to slow the action down here just a little bit. Yeah, smart. Parr got that far side underhook, control in the posture here. Get to the side mount. Pushing him against the cage is good. You know, they, him. they call him Mr. Clean, of course, for a reason, <laughs> but he's also one of the cleanest fighters on the ground I have seen. You gotta start working here a little bit. Parr looking to put him on the cage, working that side underhook position now, looking to land a few elbows. Now he's looking for the potential of a Darce choke here, works to get oh, the back, backside. gets Stretch the hooks in. He's got one hook in at the moment. Nice, he flew that corner hard. Yep, two hooks in now. Looking to flatten Petty out here. Petty does not, he's not in a good, good situation here. This is not where Petty wants to be. Especially off covering off all those losses, you know, you kind of question yourself at some point. Parr starting to land some shots to soften Petty up. He's got to respond. Dwayne Best respond. right on top of the action, telling him to do something. He's going to have to respond. Oh, Parr just over. flattens him it's out. Over, yeah. Dwayne Best nice. sees enough. Unbelievable, just got those double boots in and it was over after he got the boots in, right? Yeah, absolutely, once he got that down, dropped him down, it was all over. He, I don't know why he's complaining, he wasn't responding. Well, he's complaining at the shot to the back of the head. Yeah. Now the problem is there though, is you're turning your head, if you hit, you're turning your head into it. They even tell you in the rules meeting that you have to be where you're at. If right. you are gonna turn into it, it's on you. Nonetheless, a big win here for Colin Parr. Very good work here for him. Let's send this one up to the cage to Joe Parisi to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, at one minute, 38 seconds of round number one, this contest comes to a close as referee Dwayne Best calls a stop to the action. Your winner this evening by TKO, Colin Clean Parr. A big win for Colin Parr here, moving his record to 2-0 and oh in the world of mixed martial arts. A beautiful, beautiful fight there. Took it to the ground and got everything done. Textbook, right? Textbook. He knew what he wanted to do and he got it done. Beautiful fight, and we still have more action to come. As coming up next, it is our feature bout of the evening as Dustin Scrappy Lampros takes on Jeremy Rogers.
Ladies and gentlemen, this is your featured bout of the evening. We're set for three rounds in the Shamrock Fighting Championship's Phantom Weight Division. Introducing to you first, fighting tonight out of the blue corner, a mixed martial artist that stands five feet seven inches tall. He weighed in officially 135.8 pounds. Fighting out of Memphis, Tennessee, Jeremy Rogers. Standing across the cage tonight, fighting out of the red corner. An undefeated mixed martial artist that stands five feet, seven inches tall. He weighed in officially 135.8 pounds. Fighting out of Freeburg, Illinois, Dustin Scrappy Lambro. Referee Mark Wassum has the call for this fight. This fight is three five-minute rounds in the Shamrock FC Bantamweight division. Dustin Scrappy Lampros in the red tape. Jeremy Rogers in the blue. Quick touch of the gloves and into the action. I look for Dustin to take control of this as soon as possible. Dustin is very measured. Now, he is coming off of a hand injury in his last outing. Big overhand there from Rogers. Oh. Trying to use an uh, inside Metzger right there. Scrappy doing a good job here with the over-under position. Using his head, pushing him against the cage. Using that position, staying lower than him. Once again, in the Metzger a little bit. Keeping the underhook good. Yeah, Lampros has the overhook on that one side, eats a few knees there, trying to maintain the underhook on the, the left, or the right-hand side, excuse me. Not a good position for him. No. Body lock here. They're out of Lampros. Somebody needs to get his hips in front. Now drop in. Double. Yep. Nice takedown. They're out of Lampros. Stacking the hips here. Drop that knee. He needs to drop that knee right now. Drop that knee. Yeah, drop that knee. Rogers right was working for a submission there. Oh, oh stunned. Big one. Rocked big. Him. It's rocking. Yeah, huge right hand. What a finish there from Lampros. Quick work there from Dustin Scrappy Great. Lampros. Great job, man. Again, beautiful fight there. Weathered the early storm there out of Jeremy Rogers. Which was Jeremy Rogers' plan, right? Absolutely. It's the reverse. Beautiful fight. Let's send it up to the cage to Joe Parisi to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, this one comes to a close at one minute, 21 seconds of the very first round as referee Mark Wasm calls a stop to the action. Your winner by TKO, Dustin Scrappy Lampros. A big win for Dustin Scrappy Lampros, moving his record to three and one, talking to the camera, telling him bring on the next one. We have got more action to come, because coming up after a short break, it is our co-main event of the evening. Corbin Howard taking on Nathan Lindsay, and we'll be right back right after this.
Ladies and gentlemen, this is tonight's co-main event. It's sponsored by the Home Loan Expert, and it's set for three rounds in the Shamrock Fighting Championships Flyweight Division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, a mixed martial artist that stands five feet six inches tall. He weighed in at 125.2 pounds. Fighting out of Nashville, Tennessee, Nathan Lindsay! His opponent standing across the cage, fighting tonight out of the red corner. This mixed martial artist stands five feet six inches tall. He weighed in at 125.6 pounds. Fighting out of St. Charles, Missouri, Corbin Howard! <laughs> Referee Dwayne Best has the call for our co-main event of the evening. Quick touch of the gloves. Now, Corbin fights that stand-up style, but he is just so athletic. Oh, big chop and leg kick already. Corbin's explosive. Lindsay, though, playing it smart. Got the hands up. Got the chin down. We saw Corbin Howard sleep Chris Craig in a fight whenever he dropped those hands. Again, chopping leg kick. Oh, hard left. Lindsay here trying to get the takedown. Nice, Does. nice job. Howard, they're going to fight those hands He's to get back slow up. Him down. He want to keep. He want to keep it close here, right here. Yep. He wants to keep this on the ground. For S sure. Smart move. Take away those chopping kicks. Howard able to get back up though. Yeah. I think it surprised Howard a little bit. Well, I think this is definitely the most Howard has seen out of an opponent so far. See how he handles it, right? Exactly. Oh, under hook. Uppercut like crazy. Lindsay going up high. Lindsay throwing some kicks of his own here against the Taekwondo black belt. <laughs> he looks confident in there, Lindsay. Both of these guys look very confident. Howard, though, just teeing up with those kicks. This skill set is amazing. <laughs> Both fighters being very patient here. Nathan Lindsay in the blue tape, Corbin Howard in the red. Lindsay did say he wanted to take control of the, uh, the tempo, right? He did, and he's doing a good job of it. He's also doing a good job of cutting off the cage here on Howard. Inside leg kick. Landed a left. Lindsay is doing a good job here on moving forward. But Howard is so elusive that it's just minimizing the damage. That inside leg kick's a no, no. Went a little high is what he's saying there. I don't know. Kind of scraped up. That kick's working for him, though. Corbin Howard telling referee Dwayne Best he is okay to go. Nice outside leg kick there, though, from Lindsay. Oh, straight left. So explosive. Very explosive. Using those knees. Oh, this was. Howard got the underhooks there. Lindsay fighting for that one side. Nice takedown there out of Howard. Nice takedowns. Foot swept him right to his back. Howard here landing in side control position, has the one arm tied up, looking now to do a cradle position here, trying to make the move over. Good control there out of Howard. Lindsay's extremely comfortable here. Big oh, hammer nice fist. Right. 
straight down. Good step over there. Can't take too many. Howard's got to watch the heel hook position, though. Yeah, he's eating some punches, though. Oh, big Howard's elbows. Oh, yeah. Howard Howard's swerving go, to finish. Go. Still fighting. Lindsay Hammer. trying to survive. A minute remaining here in the first round. Howard stacking Lindsay, bleeding all over the place. Throwing some bombs on him. Lindsay still. still Lindsay trying to slow the action. I'm oh. looking for a Kimura. A lot of blood. Lindsay got to get out of that position. Yeah, that's not good. Corbin let those hands fly. Oh, Howard tees up. He eats a right hand, though. Ten seconds remaining here in the first round. Oh, big head kick there out of Howard. Yeah, Howard throwing everything, trying to finish. Touch of the gloves and back into the action. Corbin looking for a takedown of his own. Got one switch off to a double, and now he's pushing him against the cage right away. That was smart by Corbin. I, I believe that he, that's what he wanted to do. Get him on the ground like he, he had success and get some of those punches. Lay, lay those haymakers back on him. Howard moving to north-south position here. Lindsay trying to sneak out to take the back, but Howard does a good job maintaining side control here. This is a bad position up against the cage here for Lindsay. Howard's Almost, looking at he, He's trying to throw up a submission here, looking for the potential of a reverse triangle. He's gotta watch out for Howard. He's, he's moving, he's doing pretty well here with the transitions on the ground. This is what he wants. Lindsay gonna throw up an arm bar attempt here, now moving over to a triangle position. That's where Howard had success last time. Mounting up, pushing up, and still letting his hands fly. Howard pushes out of danger of that submission now. Works again to get into side control here. Great, great control of the mat. Oh. Now, 
Howard could actually drop that shoulder, look for the Von Flew. He could drop some elbows, but again, moves over to north-south. He's looking at control here. Nice step over there into half guard. Again, such a good feel. Lindsay, they're looking for the submission at every turn here. Here, here comes the punch. Heavy hands. Howard doing a good job here of stacking his opponent. Watch him, see him control that leg there, trying to make it really uncomfortable there for Lindsay, who's looking for almost like a pendulum sweep on that side. Back into side control. Howard doing a great job here of controlling. So well rounded, right? Both of these guys doing a great job here. Again, looking for that potential reverse triangle. Howard, though, good job, pops the head away. Howard is doing a great job here at keeping the top pressure. Even in the world of wrestling, top pressure is a giant thing. Head position pressure, angles, uh, getting them against the cage, keeping, keeping the position tight. Now, what we haven't talked about yet is you were actually Chuck Liddell's wrestling coach. Yes. A lot of things like this make into the same thing that you showed him, right? Without a doubt. Cage, cage, using the cage to our advantage. That's what we were, that was a key, especially against uh, Anderson Silva. I mean, uh, Vandalay. Ah, uh, that was a great fight back in the day. That was a great fight. Howard holding on, looking for, again, the top control position. Howard is basically doing a great job of just just traditionally out wrestling it. Yeah, he just, he understands it. I feel like he understands the position so much better. Both of them are really good here, though. The thing that we are seeing here, though, is Lindsay is, is very active off his back. He's a very active guard. He's continually, again, looking for that triangle submission, working the arms, trying to get up. There Howard, big hey, hammer maker. fist. Yep. He needs those. He needs more of those combinations. I agree. Drop a big bomb there. Lindsay's making Corbin work, though. Something's got to happen there. Well, this is a weird-looking position, but what Howard's doing is he's keeping all of his weight sitting on the chest of Lindsay and not letting him move. As you can see there here, he rolls out almost, almost a sit-out position sit to move out, him around. Drop his knees in. Use his head position right there. Howard again, big top pressure from side control. Gotta watch this. Lindsay looking for a heel hook. 10 seconds, going for a calf slicer. <laughs> Corbin just looks up the referee like, yeah, no, this is fine.
This is now the longest fight that Corbin Howard has had. Shot to the body out of Lindsay. Howard very relaxed here coming into the third round. But then it's that explosiveness. He's calm, he's calm, he's calm. Boom, throws that big right. Yeah, he kind of allows you to sleep a little bit and then he comes hard. He also is very good at switching stances, which is something that traditional martial artists do, especially on the Taekwondo side. They're used to throwing kicks off of both sides and he's very, very well versed in that switching of stances. Which makes standing, you twice as much dangerous. Right? Absolutely, standing in the southpaw position here. Little foot twitch, then shoots. Big Bang uppercut. Lindsey needs to go. It's hard to catch him though. So explosive angles. Yeah, Corbin Howard is so smooth and fast. Fluent, right? He's very fluid. Either way, Lindsay needs Lindsay needs an attack. Yeah, Lindsay's got to move. Again, see that explosive? He kind of sits down and then goes. Corbin fighting with his hands down here. Lindsay needs to capitalize on when he comes in. Uppercut. Corbin's looking to finish him. Corbin again here doing a, a, just a great job here. Look at the elusiveness. Look at those angles. Then he explodes, Not takes him. the cage. Dropping on a single, cut back, right to, right to the takedown. He is totally dominating. Howard has definitely been able to dominate the wrestling here in this fight so far. Just using that heavy top pressure. Yeah. Make that guy on the bottom carry you. Now, so when you're in, in the traditional world of, of wrestling, Sammy, and you make that guy carry, how exhausting is it? Well, it's everything. You feel like, you know, you, you want to make him feel your hands. You want to make him tired, wear his back out. And so wrestling-wise, you want to, hand fighting's key. And that's what he's doing here. He's, he's out boxing me out. He got the single leg, finished really fast. Explosive. Nice run around. Gotta be careful here. Yeah. Now Howard looking on a submission. Oh, look at the arm bar. Lynn's a good step out though. Stops it. He's looking to finish him, I'm telling you. Corbin wants to finish this. He doesn't want just a victory. Down to one minute remaining here in this three round fight. I think Lindsay has to uh, keep it down here. He just, that's his best position, right? Oh. Eats a big one there, answers back though. Lindsay has got to do something here though. He has got to finish. Now Ooh. come the spinning techniques. Nice double. Nice double A. Would you consider that a blast double? <laughs> one, Bur Jordan Burrow's double. Yeah, nice. for sure. Up high in the hips. Smart, didn't get his head down, and ran, ran his feet. That's all, you gotta run your feet on a double. This now you're fighting the hands. This is a great test for him though, he needs this, you know? Definitely. It's good. 
You gotta give it to Lindsay. He's fought a hard fought match. Beautiful fight there Great. for our co-main event of the evening. Great fight. Great fight by both fighters. Corbin needed that going into the, as he grows, he'll get better from this. This was a tough test for Corbin Howard. Now listen, that ticket you walked in with tonight that got you in the doors, that ticket is gold because it gets you into tonight's official Shamrock FC 314 after parties going on downstairs and we've got three fantastic options for you guys. Again, a huge, huge fight here for Corbin Howard making moves. Now, very tough fight for him. It's something that he needed young in his career here. You've got to be tested. It's very important to be tested in your career. Yeah, you want to be tested. This is something in wrestling and in anything, any kind of combat sport, you want to be tested, but you always want to get the victory. It's always nice to get the victory, but you want to test like this. Sometimes it's not good just to come out and knock people out in the first round. You got to go through a hard fought battle. This training might change a little bit, so we'll see what happens from there, but he did a great job. Let's send this one up to the cage to Joe Parisi to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, this one goes to the judges' scorecards. Judge Travis Buskin scores this bout 30-27. Judge Robin Veal scores it 30-27, and Judge Rob Francis also scores this bout 30-27. All in favor of your winner this evening by unanimous decision. Out of the red corner, Corbin Howard! A great fight from Corbin Howard to add another one in the win column here. A big fight for him. Now coming up next, it is our main event of the evening, which will feature the return of Kevin the Hitman Angle to the world of kickboxing. And we will be right back right after this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is tonight's main event! Three rounds in the Shamrock Fighting Championships 185 pound kickboxing division. This bout is sponsored by First Form. Introducing to you first, fighting tonight out of the blue corner, a competitor that stands six feet tall. He weighed in officially 183.8 pounds. This is his professional kickboxing debut. Ladies and gentlemen, fighting out of Chicago, Illinois, Shah Zulfulkali! Across the cage, his opponent, fighting tonight out of the red corner, 
a veteran of the Shamrock FC cage. He stands six feet two inches tall, weighing in at an even 184 pounds. Fighting out of St. Louis, Missouri, Kevin the Hitman Angle! Referee Mark Wassum has the call for our main event of the evening. Shaw Zoflakari in the blue tape. Kevin the Hitman Angle in the red. Oh, it's time, Sammy. Here we go. Yeah, the fans are behind Angle, huh? Kevin comes across quickly. Big leg kick there, though, out of Zoflakari. Nice push kick there out of Zoflakari. Kevin, though, throwing some big bombs to start. Kevin kind of measuring up with the jab. Strong kicks. Big, oh, big Shaw. shot. Shaw's Shaw's coming. Oh, oh he rocked him. Shaw, Shaw. Hey, because it's set up for the knees. Big knockdown there out of Zoflakari. Shaw's got Shaw is going to push forward now. For sure. Got to capitalize on this. Shaw's oh, chasing powerful. him he's down. Got, he's, he's going for it. Again, oh, heavy yeah. hands out of there. He's going for it. He's not going to stop. Explo hey. Explosive there. Explosive. Will Kevin Angle get up? Now he's done. It is all over, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Shaw Zoflakari has stopped the Hitman. It's too much power, too much explosiveness, right? He threw heavy, heavy hands. And threw with reckless too. abandon, but I mean, he just let him go. As we look at our instant replay They here, landed, though. They were land they Every landed. Every one of them landed. Hey. Shaw walks over to him and says he beat the Golden Boy. Big, big knock out there. It was a great fight. Big win for Zofa Kari. If it's, not, it's not cockiness, it's confidence. Absolutely. Confidence is key here, and he was extremely confident. Let's send it up to the cage to Joe Parisi to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, this one comes to a close at one minute. 15 seconds into round number one, declaring your winner by knockout, Shah Zulfulkari! A huge win here for Shah Zulfulkari, knocking out the hitman, Kevin Angle. A big win here for him. What a way to make his professional debut. Without a doubt, he came to play and he played hard. That was awesome. Um, you know, just too explosive, I think. Explosive and power. Those were the keys to this fight tonight. But it has been a great night of fights here at Shamrock FC 314 to kick off the year. A lot of beautiful fights tonight. Sammy, I have had a great time with you tonight. It's been my pleasure, Jeremy. And Shamrock FC, we look for great things this year in 2019.